Uh, about a month ago, I got a Zerno. Um, I met the, the, the company at SCA in Portland, and they wanted to talk more. And um, after some messaging, they offered to send me a unit uh, just for testing. Um, they said I could do whatever, whatever I wanted. If I wanted to do a review, if I just wanted to test, you know, they were interested in my work and, um, and I said, sure. Um, so I've been, I've started doing some tests. I, I want to get used to the grinder and, and they sent it to me with, uh, three versets and they were dialed in. So, um, and they were also, um, they had been seasoned. And so I started with the standard burr set and I really saw a great improvement in performance over the niche. Um, and I have some data on that that I'll, I'll share at a later date. But I wanted to uh, do a video. Uh, I was doing an experiment switching out the different burr sets because I wanted to understand on some standard test uh, how the different burr sets functioned with respect to extraction. Um, so this is uh, taking the burr set off after probably about 40 to 50 shots over the course of uh, like two weeks and cleaning it out. So you can see how much coffee kind of gets in there and the process of, of how uh, to take it apart, which it's very easy. Um, the, this grinder is, is amazingly easy to, 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 to take out the, the, the pieces and to really do a deep clean. Um, and I, I took my, I took my time here. I want to do it, do it right. But, um, I, I was just, I was very fascinated with how um, everything came out so easily. Um, so uh, I, I just, I, I took, I did a deep clean. I, I took out these burrs and, and I put in the, the next burrs and did some more testing. Um, so this is a, a long video because I, I just show about, you know, uh, cleaning it and, um, you know, I don't know who's interested in that or who's interested in, in seeing the inside and whatnot and, and the build and everything, but uh, this, is, this, is, this is why I did this. Um, so then I even uh, was trying to clean off the inside. That's, uh, that's a little tricky to get into. It doesn't have a bellow with it. I don't know if a bellow would help, and, um, but it, it mostly doesn't have uh, retention. I haven't done a test on measuring retention, um, but it seems to be pretty good. Um, and the, the, you know, build quality sound, it's a solid piece of metal. Um, I, I don't know how it would compare to the $3,000 grinder range. I haven't tested against, um, any of those. I, I haven't played with, uh, like a more expensive grinder. Uh, so to be fair, my main comparison is against the niche. Um, and I guess the one I have worked with a bit is the molar. And the, but the molars burrs are so huge. Um, so, I mean, they're like 98 millimeter burrs or something like that. And, uh, and that, that one also had variable RPM. I, what I liked about that grinder is the variable RPM. This grinder does not have a variable RPM, which is, I, I kind of would prefer, but it does have this, um, feeder inside of it. So in this, on the tube on the bottom left, as, as I'm unscrewing the, the one piece, if you look at the other piece, there's that tube and it, it feeds the, the beans in and they have another, uh, feeder that does an even slower rate of feed. Um, so, uh, that's really interesting. Um, it would be interesting to play with at a later date. Um, so a lot of coffee grounds actually get stuck underneath the, the burrs. I was surprised. Um, I don't know if this changes, uh, any of the, the offsets or if this is just, uh, you know, what you have to deal with. And, and I don't think these burrs are, these grinds are getting out, you know, so I don't know if it's a, I don't think it's an issue of like coffee going in there and stale or coffee coming out into your cup. Um, but again, very, very easy to clean. I used two brushes here. The first brush was the niche brush. And then for these little bits, cause they were, um, some of the, the coffee was a little stuck in there. I used the brush that came with the, um, Zerno, which is a little firmer. But all these parts, I'm holding it up to the camera, but I normally would have, would have just done it on the table. Um, and the one thing I did do is I, I loosened all the screws first and then went around and unscrewed them all. And then when I put them back on, I, I screwed them in a little bit and went around uh, and, to screw them all in. 
Uh, additionally, the other precaution I took was I used the same screws to the same screw holes, um, which you probably don't have to do, but uh, I, I like to do that in anything that I might take apart um, at a, any frequent rate. So again, there's coffee underneath the, the, the burr, which is fine and, and easy to clean. Um, except there's that like little edge in there. I, I had to use this finer brush to really get it out. Um, and then I just put the other burrs back on and um, screw it back in. So in, in one sense, like the, the niche, you had to rotate the dial all the way um, to pull out the burrs. And then you had to pull out a couple of pieces. With the Zerno, you just, there's two screws on the side and you pull out the whole clip so you can clean off the, the uh, of um, with just removing two screws, you can clean out most of the coffee grinds on the sides of the burrs and stuff. Um, so that's really nice because uh, it's it's much faster, and the the dial setting doesn't change. Um, so, but there was a mess left on the counter, so I ended up with um, uh, like a gram or like two grams of of coffee that had been uh, retained over time. So then I, I put in the, um, I think these were, the label on the box said silver. They're the silver SSP burrs. Um, and they, they, even though they're red, but a slightly a similar art, um, design um, to the, um, the burrs that came with it, which I, I think were, uh, these must be multi-purpose. Because then the last burr set I use is the espresso ones, which um, have uh, like the same pattern as continuous. So it's kind of curious to work with the, uh, both of those. So I sped up some of that um, just in case people wanted to watch it. And I would definitely recommend with these last two screws uh, to take the time to do a little bit on each side uh, because you want that to, to go in. You don't want that to get stuck at any angle. Um, that's really key to, to bring it forward because it's pushing on a spring between the burrs to, to, to keep them set up. Um, and then it's uh, then it's all set, and then I, I measured the the coffee grounds after I you know I, I don't feel like you have to over tighten them or anything, um, and I, I didn't even calibrate the Zerno because part of their deal is that they they're really good at calibration and they pay a lot of attention to calibration. So that's the mess that I was left behind, um, which is okay. I, I just just cleaned it up and measured it, weighed it. And um, it uh, goes to speak about how messy my counter is. But um, whenever I see those photos of people showing their coffee set up and everything is clean, I'm like, that's because you just finished making a coffee. Like, show me your coffee set up after you've pulled a shot of coffee. That's what I want to see, you know. Um, so then I... I uh, I put this, I weigh it on my tiny little Akaya Pixis scale. Super cute. And um, let's see, we got 1.44 grams. So this is the final. And then I um, did some grinding and pulled a shot. Okay, so then I pulled three shots. I did three settings. I did 100 microns, 200 microns, and 300 microns. And at this point, uh, the 200 micron setting was about what dialed in was um, for the stock burrs as well as this burr. It's where I hit the maximum 
uh, extraction yield. Um, and, and that's how much coffee was left over after just these three shots. Um, or I think I pulled one extra shot. I did three experimental shots and then I, I pulled my actual Robusta shot for the day. And I sped this video up just, you know, because I've seen this before and pulled this off and there isn't too much coffee there, but um, it goes to show what, what, what's going on. And then I, I'm, I'm just gonna be, be quiet for a minute. If, if you care, you can watch this. If you don't, you can fast forward. Um, to uh, when I I put the new burrs on. So these are the SSP burrs meant for espresso. Um, they're not the ones, the other set of burrs uh, where there's this, the, the blind burrs. They're not those. Be curious how the blind burrs would be different. Um, and the, 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 the ex this experiment is doing three different grind settings um, for each burr set and for each grind setting, pulling a shot and doing a salami shot. So I look at the one to one, the 1.5 to one, and the two to one. And then additionally, I'm, I'm looking at particle distributions to better understand how uh, are, are, you know, are the particles being greatly distributed across burrs and how are the particle di distributions shift and then um, what do the, uh, how do the shapes change across burr settings? Yeah, because it's, Burrs change could change the the size, but they they could also be changing the shape too. Um, so that that's really important in, in how ex, uh, this espresso or coffee in general is extracted. So I screw it back on, and and we are good to go. Oh, in this case, uh, I, I measured the coffee afterwards, and it looks like there's like about 0 0.71 grams. Um, and then I uh, do my coffee routine here. Someone asked me to do a recording of how I did my shop prep. So this is the standard process I use, which is... Uh, I, I weigh the grinds, uh, or I met, weigh the beans, then I grind, um, and then I'll weigh them again to check. And I've been on the Zerno the past month. It's been an interesting machine. The workflow on the Zerno has been pretty good, but it's still, there's a little bit of mess because of the static. And that even occurs when I'm spraying the coffee beans with a little bit of water. Um, I don't mind because ultimately I, I care about the cup and I haven't seen a grinder that doesn't leave a little bit of, of, of a mess that slowly accumulates after quite a few shots. Maybe I'm just more used to having a coffee mess on my counter between coffee grounds and um, splashes from the shot. Um, with the Zerno, you, you d detach that and knock that off. I, I don't particularly like that aspect of it, but um, it's a minor complaint. I'm most interested in the grind quality, which has been really good. Um, so I do a staccato tamp 
which is where you dose half the coffee and then you distribute and tamp half and then you do the second half. And I found that that does better than um, distributing the, the whole dose and tamping. Um, and I think I can also simulate some of what happens in a staccato shot, a, a sifted staccato shot, where the uh, coffee at the bottom layer is a bit denser than the, the top layer. And I also found it a bit easier to put in a full dose. I know I don't use a um, collar um, on top of the the uh, basket, but um, I just haven't gotten the inkling to go buy one. And then I, I measure the, the puck. In this case, I was trying to get to a, a precise measurement for an experimental shot. I also suspect that by doing this method of distributing and tamping twice, that it's equivalent to doing a very deep WDT. So after this uh, tamping, which I usually try to tamp um, just to the top. So I try to aim to fill the basket to where the tamper can go down. And it's an auto leveling tamper. And I don't want to go further than that because that's about where the group head is. Um, I, what you didn't see in this video is I let the puck sit in the coffee machine for five minutes to do thermal pre-infusion. And this shot is at 80 degrees Celsius, which is quite ridiculous. <laughs> because it's such a low brew temperature. However, when you do thermal pre-infusion, which is where you, you let the coffee grounds heat up, it allows uh, a, a more even extraction, even at a lower temperature. So then in the uh, profile, I use a, uh, a ramp over about 12 seconds to uh, one milliliter per second. And then I hold that until the filter covers. And once the filter is covered with coffee, I hit a button to move on to the next step, which dumps the, the water that's in there and holds at a very low uh, flow rate. I think it's, it's either zero or it's 0.1 milliliter per second, but it's very, very low. And it does that for 30 seconds. And then it does another uh, ramp um, up to 0.5 milliliters per second. And I know that's very slow, um, but in my testing, I found that uh, 0.5 milliliter per second will do a bit better at extraction. So if you have the time to wait, instead of it being very uh, fast, you can go a lot slower and get a higher extraction and a shorter volume, um, which is what I prefer. That's my aim. I have done the same profile at one meter, mil, mil, milliliter per second, which has allowed it to go a bit faster. But... Um, you know, it doesn't save me too much time. So this shot profile is pretty long. Uh, it stays at about one bar of pressure um, or less the whole time. Um, and it, it, there's no tiger stripes. There's no um, crema. I, I don't care for crema, so I'm okay with that. And uh, the other thing that you don't see is that the shower screen on this one has been modified to where uh, water is basically coming out of the center. And if you slammed a puck with water just from the center of a shower screen, you would get some deep channeling in the middle of the puck. However, because of the thermal pre-infusion and the slow ramp, um, it does not cause a channeling effect. Because once the um, filter basket is filled with water, then uh, adding more water once you're, once it's pressurized uh, causes just water to flow evenly. It doesn't cause uh, issues with um, water uh, channeling. So this, this shot ended up being in the like the 20% range of uh, TDS and uh, extraction yield. So I uh, sped up the shot to go a bit faster. Um, but I have this shot and the next shot, which are um, using different burrs. So the first shot was the stock, this is the silver, and the last one is the red burr. And it's kind of hard to tell where the difference is between them. 
And it, it turns out from an extraction point of view that they have similar extraction. Um, but I didn't measure uh, taste in these experiments. Um, they, they were strictly looking at uh, extraction yield. What I'm still trying to get used to with these shots is that the uh, visually they look very different from regular espresso shots. And I, I think this is a good time to talk about definitions because we say we have this definition of espresso that comes from uh, Italy, which is a very strict in terms of the amount of pressure you use, the time for the shot, uh, the, the input amount of coffee, the output. Um, and it, uh, it, it's not been what espresso in third wave coffee has been for a while now. There's been a lot of different profiles that are done. And uh, now, really, uh, you use lower pressures. You vary the temperature. You vary the dose. A lot of the standard dose is much higher. You know, my standard dose is like 22 grams or 22 and a half grams in a waffle basket. Um, so I, I prefer to uh, m define espresso by strength, um, which, you know, you could argue then that that opens the door to calling something like cold brew coffee espresso if you make it strong enough. And maybe we new, need new names for, for coffees and define them based on strength because you're pulling out the same things. You know, it just depends on, on how well you're, you're pulling it out. And at, at, at a certain point, there, there's, a, there's a lot of overlap between the two, um, between espresso and cold brew and espresso and pour over. Like if you really make pour over efficient, could you get it to the point of espresso? I'm not sure the answer to that question, and I'm not really interested in finding out at the moment, but it's something that I'm curious about. So uh, if, if anybody has a, a, a curious uh, you know, thought about or opinion about definition of espresso you know I'd be, be happy to discuss it in the comments or or in some other form um, this is a part of a discussion I had with Scott Rayo at, in Portland about um, you know my espresso versus his filter coffee because if he makes filter 2.0 coffee is it really filter coffee based on the definitions of how you make filter coffee and the same for my espresso so it's interesting to consider like how the definitions of coffee have evolved over time based on uh, brew style. So, Also, if you like this long format of video about something more standard or seemingly, seemingly mundane as cleaning a machine, uh, let me know. I, I don't mind doing more videos like this. Uh, they're just long. <laughs>